Welcome to Currents. Uh, my name is Jeff Olson. I'm Public Safety Director for the City of Cedar Falls. And with me today is Captain Tim Smith, who's currently signed to the Fire Division. This is the second part of a series that we have about uh, public safety hiring and training. Uh, the first, uh, first part that we did, the first of the series, was on the hiring process. What we want to talk to you today about is uh, the training that goes along uh, with that. Uh, so, so once somebody is hired and they've started uh, working with the Cedar Falls Public Safety Department, we want to talk a little bit about the training that they go through. So I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll uh, run through a list uh, kind of quickly of, of uh, what that process is before we get into a, uh, some great videos here. We've just got some great videos uh, that we've been taking over the year of, of all the different training that we've done. So what you see on the screen here uh, is the public officer training process. So once somebody's hired, and it's not necessarily in this order, but these are, this is the, uh, the training that they, uh, everybody goes through here uh, at the beginning of their career. So we have a 16-week Iowa Law Enforcement Academy that's held in uh, the Des Moines area. Uh, the individual becomes certified as an Iowa peace officer at that time. We have a 14-week uh, training program here in the city of Cedar Falls in which an individual will spend uh, four weeks on each shift the first, second, third shift, and then they'll spend two weeks of what we call a shadow phase where they'll be operating um, in a squad car with a police officer who is in plain clothes and they're supposed to be doing uh, uh, nearly 100% of the, of the duties um, without that training officer having to step in. So it's, it's kind of a final phase in that process. And then we have a, a four-week Cedar Falls fire class uh, which uh, uh, gets them to a Firefighter 1 certification. And that is typically taught by one of our fire supervisors uh, who teaches that class and, and gets them um, uh, through the classroom portion. Uh, of course, there's also some, a lot of skills actually involved. And we have a 44-page firefighter skills training manual uh, that they have to go down to the fire station and all the, fi the firefighters work them through each one of those 44 uh, uh, pages of skills. And so once they've um, attained all of that those skills and pass all these tests, then they're uh, able to operate solo um, as a police officer or a firefighter. And now what we kind of want to do is run through some of the uh, ongoing training that occurs after uh, this quite lengthy process. And so we want to talk a little bit about fire suppression, uh, you know, water supply pumping, the use of a tanker, portable tanks, uh, and we want to show you some videos of some actual uh, uh, fires that we had where we uh, had some houses that we um, uh, that were to be torn down, so we used them as a live uh, fire training. Uh, Waterloo Region Training Center, they got a great training facility there. Uh, a propane tank that came in, car fires, I'm going to talk about auto extrication, confined space, ice rescue, consumption drills, and that kind of thing. So. Um, uh, we, we've got a lot of neat graphics to go with it, like I've said. So, Tim, maybe you want to start out by talking a little bit about the fire suppression and um, uh, some of the work that goes there. But maybe at first I should say that, uh, Tim, why don't you introduce yourself, I guess, because you did a lot of our training coordination for the police and fire divisions here. Sure. Yeah, I've been with the city of Cedar Falls uh, since uh, 2005, and I started cross-training in 2008. Uh, prior to coming to Cedar Falls, I was on a volunteer a fire and ambulance department in LaPorte City, and then I had four years of previous law enforcement experience before I came as well. And like Jeff said, I was uh, the training coordinator for both police and fire department for a while. Okay, so you've got a little bit of experience with all of this, not only going through it, but actually coordinating it. So, right. so that's great. So maybe we can start out a little bit by talking about fire suppression and some of the live fire trainings and things we've done. Okay, so in our patrol cars, we have what's called a compressed air foam system. Uh, it's basically kind of a hybrid fire extinguisher. Um, it's uh, attached to a hose and you're able to reasonably get uh, uh, to a distance where you can keep yourself safe, but it sprays a foam. It's a foam concentrate mixed with water and uh, you can put several gallons and it may not put out every fire, but it will definitely knock it down. Yeah, it definitely can slow it down. Uh, typically your uh, public safety officer would arrive at the scene first and if they have a calf system, uh, there's been many times where they've either put in small fires out, whether it be grass fire, dumpster fire, or have at least gotten started with some fire uh, suppression before the fire trucks arrive. Uh, here you'll see just a water supply operation. Uh, this is uh, used when uh, we can't hook an engine to a hydrant uh, and we've got to have water hauled in. So, so this picture is showing that same operation here. You've got two tanks set up uh, just to, allows us more water uh, to use at the scene uh, due to a lack of hydrant. Uh, this here is the, the Waterloo Training Regional Training Center. 
Uh, we did some live burn training over there, and this is where we work on our you know, fire suppression, our searching uh, techniques uh, and structures of low visibility. And uh, the firefighters here have been put through a few different uh, obstacles and a few different uh, training scenarios at this uh, great facility that Waterloo has. And each firefighter uh, goes through all of these scenarios that, that we're showing you. Uh, this is a house uh, fire that we were able to uh, use and uh, simulate a fire ground attack. Uh, we did some search and rescue inside by filling the building with smoke. Sometimes what we do is, uh, well, frequently what we do when we do these live, live uh, house fires is before we actually set the uh, house on fires, we have a, um, uh, a rather heavy dummy that we put inside and we'll frequently take the uh, house and fill it full of smoke or else we'll darken the, uh, um, the shield uh, that the firefighters look through and we'll have them crawling through uh, the homes and, and locating uh, individuals and, and dragging them out or else we'll use what you see here as the thermal imaging camera. You know, fortunately, uh, fi uh, structure fires are um, not as com not very common, so you know, being able to simulate this type of training on a fire ground is a benefit to all the employees. Or right, you can see them dragging that dummy out. And we're able to do a lot. We're able to do some uh, interior attacks, practice some interior attacks on these live burns, and we're also able to. Um, uh, we, we eventually end up burning the entire house down, and so you're able to, to practice all sorts of different scenarios that you would have at a, at a real live fire scene. Yeah, right here the, the firefighters are being demonstrated and practicing uh, ventilation. They got a fan on the other side of the structure uh, venting the smoke from the residents to uh, allow better visibility inside. Again, this is another one, just a, a, a water operation there. Uh, here we just had some props kind of set up so uh, the staff could work on forcible entry. So practice working with uh, different types of tools, you know, simulating breaching walls and uh, trying to get to areas of limited space. So they got them practicing with a bunch of different uh, pieces of equipment that are used at the fire rescue. So frequently when we have these uh, live fire burns, we set up different stages. This was one of the stages that we had just set up uh, uh, just a, a few weeks ago. You know, where you did the, the um, rescue training, where you had, uh, you know, use of the chainsaw and some of the cutting, and then you had the um, hauling. We had to haul in water for this one as well, because this was outside, a little towards the edge of town, where we didn't have uh, a hydrant to hook up to. So we, so we had our public safety officers hauling in water and using the, uh, uh, you know, the pools to hold the water. So there's a lot of different... Um, uh, stages that go into this training, which is uh, very, very useful and, and, and very realistic. And the personal protective gears, uh, oh, well, here we got a car fire. Um, we do several of these. Uh, we've got a great uh, uh, Ike Auto uh, that provides us with a lot of vehicles that we can burn. Um, so we have these vehicles that we set on fire and, and um, uh, the firefighters can practice, the public safety officers can, can um, practice uh, uh, putting out car fires as well. So here you'll see uh, auto extrication. Again, those uh, vehicles are donated and we're able to go out there and uh, practice operating with our extrication tools uh, and just uh, educating the firefighters on uh, getting into a vehicle if uh, somebody is trapped inside. Those are exceptionally powerful tools. Um, they can Care about any part of a car apart that, uh, that you need to to get inside. Uh, this here we had a prop that was brought in. Uh, uh, it taught us uh, how to respond to a limited area uh, like a trench. So this is a trench rescue prop and we had an instructor that brought it in on a trailer and then we were able to actually we had to put all the wood in and the ladders to work on making it stable so we could enter down into the trench uh, to remove a victim. Uh, this was great training that uh, we kind of got from the outside within the last couple of years. Yeah, we don't have a whole lot of confined space uh, rescues that occur here, but uh, it's certainly something you want to be prepared for. And we have the equipment and we have the training to do such. So it's um, uh, something that we train on, as all of this is on an annual, at least an annual basis. 
Uh, boat rescue uh, is another one. Um, we got boat rescue, we have ice, re uh, ice rescue that we do as well, and I think what you'll see here is um, um, some pretty neat footage of some ice rescue training uh, that occurred. You got someone in the water, uh, and then you have, of course, your um, all your individuals that are involved in the rescue. You can kind of see the process that's involved there. I remember doing that uh, quite a number of years ago, um, and, and, I, and I did both aspects of it. I remember getting into the water as, as, as a victim during one of them. Uh, the suits uh, that they wear, it's amazing what they do to not allow you to be as cold as you think you might be when you're out there, but that's very, very cold water. And we have a lot of different areas in town, a lot of uh, little lakes and ponds and rivers, so it's, it's pretty, pretty important training. Now here we're doing a uh, air consumption drill, basically training the firefighters to know their limitations uh, when they have a pack on. And then uh, I think you'll see here uh, them practicing putting on their PPE, which is protective clothing and a training. So this is a great video here. Uh, they have a specific amount of time that they're in the requirements of how quickly they need to get into their gear. And this is a training session here where they're practicing this. Yeah, the one you saw before this of them under the fire truck, uh, they have to take the tank off and they have to crawl underneath a, a, a real low area. We just have them crawl underneath the fire trucks. They have to take that tank off and do their crawling while they're um, actually uh, wearing and breathing through the, through the tank. So it's a pretty, pretty significant training session. And when we set up these consumption drills, we, we try to get them working a little bit so they know their limitations, you know, climbing ladders, uh, pulling a rope on a pulley system, you know, crawling, removing the SCBA, carrying hose, and so on. Uh, here's a prop that we had brought in from the Fire Service Training Bureau uh, to simulate a propane emergency. So it's burning off propane and we have to get it extinguished uh, so they get in teams and they can actually start that prop on fire and uh, knock it down and put the propane fire out. Yeah, which would be something similar to a semi or, or a train that might uh, yeah, uh, have sure. some type of a flammable substance in it. So I think, uh, I think we've run through most of our videos, most of our, our uh, photos here. Uh, so the point we're trying to make here is that, that um, you know, we've got a significant amount of training. You know, we talked earlier about uh, uh, what you've got on the screen. There's a 16-week um, academy, the 14-week field training, the four-week uh, fire class, the 44-page skills manual. Um, and with that skills manual, too, is part of that certification process is they have to go in front of the state and they have to... Um, uh, do uh, we don't know which skills but the state's going to test you on a certain number of skills and you have to pass that as part of that uh, firefighter one certification as well as the, the written test required by the state too but then what what uh, well, once that is done then um, it becomes our responsibility and quite frankly that was Tim's responsibility for a number of years uh, to see that we get all of this continued training uh, annually to make sure that we stay on top of these skills um, we're fortunate to live in a town that's very safe um, and we don't have a lot of uh, incidents in, in you know, where, we're, where we're doing the confined space or, or a number of significant fires. And so training becomes a very important part of what we do. So um, um, these are some of the things that we've done in the past six months to a year um, to, to make sure that our public safety officers are all uh, you know, ready to, uh, to respond when they need to. Right. We try to, we try to train for all different types of scenarios. A year or so ago, we did an active shooter training drill. And uh, every month, uh, the fire department, uh, the police department, we have training. And it doesn't just stop there. I mean, there's online training that we do yep. uh, for both police and fire. That would involve the public safety officers and the police and fire staff. And we try to train them in as many scenarios because, as we know, not every scenario we could face is going to happen, you know, often. So we try to prepare for it the best we can yep. through simulations. So uh, this concludes the um, uh, second part of a series. And what we would like to do um, for our third uh, part is uh, actually uh, do somewhat of a simulation of a fire scenario in which we will have the officers driving the truck and doing that type of thing. So um, we'll be uh, rolling that out here in a few weeks and then uh, we'll have some others uh, after that to just kind of fill you in a little bit of what's, uh, what's going on with the public safety program and some of the training and, and some of the things that we do for the citizens of Cedar Falls. So I, I want to thank you for watching.